right after a pretty awful night. Took a nap at by right the edge of Carter Park. Once you got to Breckenridge, I think it's about an hour and a half. I was just out cold. Cold being the operative word too. So now we're on the way to the cabin. Taking a pretty roundabout route. Had to go down before I go up again. Climbing out of Spruce Trail. Look at what these things are. Spruce Creek Diversion. Huh. Yeah, apparently got some more climbing to do. The creatures have been around through here. Nice one humanoid. That's a lot of rock. That's a lot of nuts. My hand looks puffy. No way. Just the altitude or what? All right, you got another climb up the Wheeler Trail. And it should branch up to the cabin. Freaking finally. All right, so. I was looking back through all my recordings and I didn't get anything recorded on the French Pass climate descent, unfortunately. It was, uh, first that was at night and it was by far the hardest section of the course and I was getting uh, pretty messed up at that point, both physically and mentally. I was really worn down. I was kind of hoping to the aid station would be a sleep station, but it wasn't, so I just continued on. 
Anyway, uh, that pass has got a couple of water crossings. Uh, by the way, I'd, I was already getting out of it, so I didn't drink enough at the aid station. And by the first water crossing, I would pretty much drank all two liters. So I must have been really thirsty and didn't really know it. But I smelled something dead on that stream crossing, so I didn't fill up there. But fortunately, there was another one close to that, so I filtered my water there. And then I had to cross that and try to pick up the trail, which is a little bit hard to do at night. You have to kind of go along the ledge by the stream there and up. Anyway, that's where it got really steep. And I'm talking, I had a section there where I had to go put my hands down and basically climb up. It was only probably 30 feet or so, but still super steep. And then we ran into a, kind of a snow and ice pack section, but uh, some footsteps were already there which helped me climb up that until I eventually climbed up and there's a, a big cairn at the top marking that. And then going down, it, it was almost as steep as going up. And again, I just, maybe being tall, I suppose it doesn't help in this, but I just, it was so steep I had, you know, problems just kind of getting down there. And there was also kind of like loose rock in the, the initial part of the descent, so yeah, it wasn't fun. You really need really good trail shoes for this one. I mean, seriously, you need some real grip. And something also was kind of weird is I saw like two lights off in the distance. They looked kind of like headlights. I don't know if there was any highway there, and they didn't really change or seem to go around trees or anything, so they just kind of hung out there. And at the end, uh, toward the trail, toward Breckenridge anyway, there started being cabins and houses by, you know, an actual road. So I'm guessing it was some kind of lighting from there, but anyway, just in my kind of sleep out of brain is constantly kind of freaking me out because I look up and I see two lights and I thought they'd be like, you know, the eye shine from a bear or something. So. I don't know, every like 10 minutes or something, I'd look up, get my well, bearings, huh, and see those lights and get kind of momentarily freaked out again, like there was a bear or something out there with me. So that wasn't fun either. And then it was, after you got down off the peak, it was just, again, just more water trail. Just water the whole way through, had to have been well, it seemed like a couple miles. I don't know if it was that long or not. So my feet were soaked and basically frozen, and that's when I really started to get, I think, the blister issues that I ended up having. Anyway, I eventually made it to the road, and that's where I met Nicholas, who uh, was eventually went on to be the, the winner, and he was uh, in pretty much as uh, rough shape as I was, at least mentally, there. Uh, he told me a story. He thought uh, he was some I kind of cabinet. military guy, and he's getting chased by me. He's trying to use uh, <sighs> his hiking pole as, like, a sniper rifle. Yeah, pretty weird. So we were messed up, and at least we got to that road, and we were going down that, and... Uh, Started getting really cold. I had to stop and put like all my layers on again and my double up my pants and all that. That's when I hit the Turks Trail through the forest uh, down toward Breckenridge and kind of got lost and turned around in that because there's like I don't know if it's a north and south Turks Trail, but eventually I found that and we struggled down to Breckenridge and I actually have some footage of the Breckenridge trails not from then of course but uh, when I did a scouting run before the race started so I can stick that in. 
So anyway, picking back up, I made it to Francie's cabin, which is amazing by the way. I figured it was just going to be some basic rustic cabin in the woods, but it's pretty awesome. I didn't get a real chance to do a full exploration of it for like video on YouTube or anything. Would have been nice to do that, but at that point I knew it was possible I could still podium, so I was more interested in getting my feet, feet fixed and getting out of there. Speaking of, my feet were in pretty rough shape. Fortunately, they had a lady there who could did some, pop some blisters, bandaged them up. But uh, they're, I think, kind of beyond that already. But uh, good enough to get me through at least. So, composting toilet. Just dump sawdust in there, I guess. At least there's no three seashells. Oh, he doesn't know how to use the three seashells. All right, leaving the cabin. After a uh, bug spray on my bottles and uh, bladder hose issue, got that resolved. That was a nasty taste, but <laughs> head out on uh, the longest section in the course. It's uh, about 23 miles. I've got a Climb up to about 12,500 feet right away here. Then we gotta drop back down to about 10,000. Then there's one more climb up and then down to about 12,500. I said that the trail's not too bad. It's just long, but do it in a day. Should get good views. Hopefully be high enough that it's not too hot. Anyway, there's water crossings and I've got my filter bottle on top of my pack ready to go. So, looking forward to getting this done. And just uh, that last section to bring it in, this son of a bitch is over. See off there is second place, Hannah Carta. Just climbing to the end of Wheeler Trail, enjoying the views. There are actually some kind of overgrown watery parts in there too. down to the ski lift area. Still down this crappy rock roads. Never see one of these again, it'd be too soon. Got a view back down the Breckenridge. So this is either on the Gluteus Maximus or Gluteus Minimus Trail. Yes, I'm serious about that name. Just look at my glutes, what a perfect bath. Wait, is that the Horn of Gondor? The Horn of Gondor! What a I go running totally safely with my sword drawn to answer the call, but I left it in the car. Not really, yet. it's it's in the trunk. Alright, filtered some water from the stream. Now we're just heading more to this single track. That's a nice boardwalk. Yep, 
feet are starting to hurt again. It's gonna be a struggle to the end, but we're getting there. So we've got a tank and a fire hydrant in the middle of a bunch of downed trees. Through a, it's like a young pine forest or something. And I think we're about to get pretty close to starting our ascent. So, gonna be a tough go, but can't wait to get started because as soon as you start, sooner it's over. All right, we're starting to climb through this burned forest. And that's all I remember about that until I woke up, for lack of a better term. I just completely lost, I lost time and I was somewhere in the green part of the forest with no recollection of how I got there. Unfortunately, I was still on trailhead the right direction. If I'd gone back down the mountain, I had been pretty upset with myself. All right, looks like our first break in a tree line here. Getting close. Look at all these flowers. transition to the rock trail. There's another section got pretty steep again going up to the divide proper and I kind of forgot to take video I guess but I got some pictures. Alright so getting the trail down kind of divide was a lot trickier than I was expecting and I still got a while to go to the camp not even sure where the turn off is. Probably should have rested beforehand, but in it for a pound, I guess. I do not know why they insist on making trails so steep around here. let me down already. Oops. Emergency butt dialed 911, so I got my attention. Anyway, oh, the phone's out. Can't see me, but you know, I waited out a rainstorm. Got about 45 minutes of good sleep. So I'm headed out on the bike path to finish this bastard. Feels good, man. All right, well, that's all the footage I have from the race. And that part was going on a paved bike path for like a, it was a good 10K. So I was feeling pretty good then, actually running pretty well. And then you turn off on a trail that for a couple miles is pretty good, but then it gets back to the technical stuff again. And 
on that I was not having a fun time at all. Started having a lot of, uh, I don't know, call it hallucination issues. For some reason, I thought the Chinese Communist Party was making me run hill repeats. Yeah, I got nothing on that. And, uh, going down on the Rocky Trails, my foot was hurting really, really bad. I took some leave, but it was doing basically nothing for the pain there. And, again, I kind of losing time and found myself running down the trail. Fortunately, I didn't trip and fall because it's still pretty technical. And, yeah, it was uh, a really miserable end to that until I got there to the last turn off to the paved trail section when I was able to kind of run again. And I remember kind of swerving around from being sleepy, but eventually, yeah, I made it and finished in third place, which is the goal, so all the pain and discomfort and weirdness ended up being totally worth it. This was, again, the hardest race I've ever done, and really not even close. I've run Moab and Cocodona, and while those were a bit longer, they were just nowhere near as difficult. And I gotta tip my cap to anyone who finished this race. It's uh, absolutely an incredible accomplishment. Uh, besides all that, I do recommend, if you're interested in doing this race, hopefully these videos will give you uh, a good idea of what it's actually like and what it requires, so hopefully you'll be better prepared than I was.